So this is a little video uh, really just about uh, sort of solving uh, momentum problems and dealing with um, how we can get the problem to be a little bit more complicated than we were seeing last time. And uh, the first thing to deal with is what do we do when uh, we've got one object moving in, say, this direction, and let's say this object A, and it's got, uh, you know, it's got a particular mass and a particular velocity, and another object, say B, that's moving in the opposite direction with its own uh, mass and velocity. What do we do in this case? And how do we take account for the fact that these things are moving in opposite directions. And the reason is, the way we have to do this is to remember that momentum is a vector, which means direction matters. And generally, by convention, what we will do is we assign one direction to be positive. So we can sort of say that if you're go anything going in that direction has a positive velocity and therefore you know, it has a positive moment momentum. And anything going in that direction, we say, well, to make sure it's going the other way is it's got a negative velocity, which therefore means it has a negative momentum. And if we do that, it turns out that we can solve problems with this quite nicely, which is what we are going to do. So let's start with um, a little sort of note. So, example one. A sort of a head head-on collision okay so momentum is a vector this means The direction matters. Okay. Objects traveling in opposite directions will have uh, Opposite signs for their momentum. This is a clunky sentence. But the basic is me trying to eventually get there. One will be positive and one will be negative. So let's deal with a sort of a worked example of this. So let's say we've got an object, put an object A, and it is moving that way. And let's give it a mass. Let's say it's 0 0.15 kilograms. And let's give it a mass of 2.4 meters per second. And let's say it's going to collide head on with object B. And let's make object B uh, lighter. I say it's got a mass of 0 0.05 kilograms, and let's say it's moving that way with a velocity of 1.25 meters per second. And we're going to say that afterwards they stick together. Okay, so afterwards they stick together. Now, we know their mass afterwards is going to be uh, 0 0.20 kilograms. But what we don't know at all is their velocity. And importantly, although you might be able to sort of infer, well, you know, I reckon this is going to be still moving to the right. I'm not going to say that, that I definitely know that to start with. I'm going to let the maths demonstrate to me what's going on. 
Okay, so we solve this though in exactly the same way as we've solved the previous ones. So we want to say that the momentum that we've got initially is equal to, we've got to do the mass times the velocity of this top one, which is uh, 2.4 times 0.15, we've got 0 0.36. And that is positive. Momentum of this one is 0 0.05 times 1.25. As a number, it is 0 0.0625. But it's negative because it's going in the other direction. Now we still do what we normally do. We add them together. We get... 0 0.36 plus negative 0 0.0625 and that comes out as being 0 0.2975. Oh, Ben's turned off. which is still positive because this number is fundamentally bigger than this one. But it is, you know, so we've decreased the momentum a little bit. So what is the, does this tell us about the momentum afterwards? Well, we know the momentum afterwards will be this number. So the final momentum is still the same. So it's 0 0.2975, it's positive. So we can then say that as, we can take our numbers down, as P equals mass times velocity, velocity equals momentum over mass. So we get 0 0.2975 over 0 0.20. And we get one point. 4875 is remind calculus, but I'm going to put 1.49 meters per second. So, and that should kind of make sense in some ways. If you've got an object which is moving in a particular direction, which you've got with A, and it's sort of struck by a smaller object moving in the second direction, it's not going to change direction, but it will slow down, and this is what we've got 1.49 meters per second. And that is how we deal with things if they are a negative momentum. If after doing our calculation, we would have had it, we had a negative number here. So if this number, you know, whatever it had been, had been negative, what does that mean? Well, it means that your combination of objects afterwards, they're moving in the other direction. And that allows us to keep a track of the direction that things are going in, which is what the negative sign is. But otherwise, it's exactly the same type of problem. And next we'll look at... So let's deal with uh, another example. And let's complicate it slightly by saying, what if they don't stick together? What happens if you've got two objects, they collide, and then they don't move off as one nice sort of unified blob. Okay, so maybe um, you can think of them being as like, um, they're quite solid, so they don't stick. There is nothing there. So <clears throat> the thing is, we always approach it in exactly the same way. <clears throat> so uh, let's take some objects. We'll give them some masses. We'll give them some velocities, and we'll see what we get afterwards. It help if I turn my pen on. So let's deal with object uh, A and then object B. And we'll say that object A it has a mass of, let's say, let's make it something heavier. Let's make it 2.40 kilograms. And let's say it's moving with a velocity. We'll say it's moving in that direction. Have a nice positive velocity. And it's moving with a velocity of, so let's say, 8.2 meters per second. So this is quite a rapidly moving object. And let's say that object B is moving 
well let's say let's say it's stationary let's just make this easier let's go it's got no velocity but let's say it's got a mass of um let's say 1.4 kilograms and let's say it's got a velocity of zero it's not moving at all and then afterwards let's find out that afterwards after the collision i've got object a got object b they're not together but let's say what happens is that we then observe that object a is moving still with its mass 2.40 kilograms but let's say its velocity this time has decreased and it's now moving at let's say um, 4.6 meters per second so it's still carrying on forward so it's basically come to B and it's bumped it B has a mass of 1.4 velocity is a question mark now, what is the velocity of object B? Well, guess what? We solve the problem in exactly the same way. Uh, we work out the momentums of each one. So the momentum of A is 2.4 times 8.2, which I'm just gonna throw in the calculator. So 2.4 times 8.2, help my calculator was on. We have 19.6. 8 plus 0, because 0 times 1.4 is 0. And that is going to equal momentum of A, which is now 2.4 times 4.6. We get 11.04 plus the momentum of object B. These things are equal. So what we can do is we now have an equation of 19.68 is equal to 11.04 plus the momentum of object B. Well, we can solve that nicely. We just need to subtract it. This was a great idea until I realized it's a little bit more difficult than I made it. Put that there, minus. So what we get is 19.68 minus 11.04, and we end up with 8.64. So we now have the momentum of B. It is still positive, that's good. That means we know it's going in the same direction, it's going to the right. And as that equals mass times velocity, we can say that as momentum of B is equal to the mass times the velocity, we end up with 8.64 is equal to mass 1.4 times by the velocity. So 8.64 over 1.4 is equal to the velocity and that equals 6.17 and about 6.2 meters per second and that fills in that one nicely so object a comes in bangs into object b and gives it a big kick and so it travels on a lot further and actually that's something that occurs a lot of the time you know if you if you kick something which is light, you're going to give it a large amount, of, you're going to give it a significant amount of momentum, but it does at the same time, it's going to reduce the momentum of, of you as you sort of kick it. So that is a nice example of what you do if things don't stick together. You still always work out the momentum on one side and compare it to the momentum and equate it to the momentum on the other. Cancel things out by the subtraction or addition and there you go. Smiley face. The final type of problem that we're going to look at is what we call in physics an explosion, which sounds exceptionally exciting because I just also said it as an explosion. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, 
Unfortunately, for those of you who think this is all going to be about real explosions, to a physicist, an explosion is simply a situation where you have kind of two objects that start off together. Oh, why did you do that? Uh, start off together, but um, one of them, but they see some sort of like, ah, go away. There's some kind of little impact between them, which means that, yes, uh, what happens is one moves one way and one goes off in another direction. So the white object will go off in, hopefully if I could pick the right picture, the white object goes off in that direction, the red object in that direction. And the conservation of momentum can tell us that this, you know, this we can work out, much like anything, we can work out the speeds uh, of these objects afterwards by applying the conservation of momentum. Now, Things where you may have seen this um, include, like, you know, if you see, like, if a cannon fires a cannonball, uh, the cannon will move backwards whilst the ball moves forwards. Uh, if you are on ice skates and you throw something, um, you will move backwards as a consequence of doing so. That's how you can sort of move, even in a frictionless thing, by conserving momentum. And ultimately, it's even actually how rockets are, rockets are launched. OK, uh, the exhaust gases from a rocket are sent in one direction. They're sent down. The conservation of momentum therefore means that the rocket itself must move upwards. So um, let's deal with a particularly mundane example before I send you off to see some kind of fun ones. Uh, let's deal with a skateboarder. Of mass 65 kilograms. Um, throws a mass of, let's say they're throwing a mass of seven kilograms with a velocity of, uh, let's say they throw it at 4.5 meters per second to the left. What happens? Okay. So here's our scenario. We have a skateboarder now they're on skateboards because that means we've reduced and we can helpfully like, ignore friction and we've got our object that they're holding quite hefty, 7 point, so we've got the mass of this is 7.5 kilograms and we've got the mass of the skateboarder and their skateboard let's say is uh, 65 kilograms and they throw it. Now what is important about this is that before any of this happens they are stationary. There is no motion at all, which means that the initial momentum is equal to zero because they're not moving. Now, what that also means, because momentum must be conserved after the interaction, that means that therefore the final momentum must also equal zero. So what is going on in our after? So if we draw a little picture for after, what we will have is we have our object, which has a mass 7.5 and a velocity, we're gonna say that it was going to the left, so 4.5. It's going in this direction. So to keep consistent with our other, with our previous thing, we're going to say this is negative because we're going to the left. So we've got negative 4.5 meters per second. And what that means is we've now got our skateboarder. Must be moving this way. 
Now they have a mass of 65 kilograms, but we do not know what their velocity is. The reason we can work out what's going on is that because our initial situation has no momentum and our final situation has no momentum, what that means is that afterwards, you know what, I've just realised I've not included some units here. That's very bad. OK, so what that means is that the momentum of this object plus the momentum of this, this other object must, must add up to zero. So what we have is, uh, let's solve that problem. So we've got a momentum of the, of the block going to the left is uh, 7.5 times 4.5 and negative 4.5. We get a momentum of minus 33.75 kilogram meters per second. And because we have to have a number of zero, we need to, what we get is zero is equal to uh, minus 33.75 plus the momentum of the skateboarder. Well, that's obviously therefore this momentum must be equal and opposite. It's got to be plus 33.75. And so we can put that into our thing up here. So we've got a momentum of plus 33.75. And so we can say, oh, right, OK, so momentum equals mass times velocity. 33.75 is equal to mass. Ooh, we know the mass, 65. 65 times whatever the velocity is. So therefore, uh, the velocity is equal to 33.75 divided by 65. And that gives us 0 0.52 meters per second. And that is the third kind of example where we have something where one part of it moves one way, therefore to conserve momentum, the other part moves another way. We can treat the problem always in the same manner. What's the momentum at the start? What's the momentum at the end? Makes it quite nice because they're both zero, which means they must have equal and opposite momentum, and it allows us to solve these problems. And there we go. Hello. Right. So you've just watched three sort of worked examples of momentum being more complex. And uh, in the next lesson, we will have some time where we sort of spend time solving problems like that, because it's like anything, when you do it enough times, it becomes, okay, that's the, the method. But hopefully the method makes sense. Now, what I want to do here is to give you an opportunity to see some of that in action, uh, particularly that last one with explosions. Now, momentum in an explosion is often a little bit artificial, like skateboards, people on ice skates and things like that. But one of the um, most uh, obvious things where this occurs is through the firing of a gun, because it's one of the situations where you have an object, the rifle, which is reasonably, it's got a reasonable mass, they're not light things, and you're shooting a bullet at an incredible speed. So you have this comparison between a quite heavy object and a very small object, which is given a lot of speed. And that bullet carries with it quite a large amount of momentum. And if the bullet goes one way, then the rifle itself must move the other. And that's what uh, people call recoil. And if you're not prepared for it, then what ends up with that happening is that, you know, you, you get the gun will jump back and will hit you in the shoulder and can cause an injury. Um, so what there are now is two little videos and they're interesting just in and of themselves it's from the slow-mo guys and there are two types of uh two types of uh gun one is a very large 
uh, 50 caliber sniper rifle. So it's one of the most stupidly big things you can buy. Uh, it's got a huge bullet and therefore you get quite a large recoil from it. And that recoil is the momentum being conserved and you'll see what happens in slow motion as people are, you know, as the actual people are like dealing with that. Uh, the other end though, then they did another video, same people, a bit later on, uh, they do it with a very tiny, tiny gun, a gun that was built and made and is only like a couple of inches in size. And they do the same thing and they see how it happens. You can see the momentum, not just in the launch. So you will still, even on a tiny one, you'll see the recoil. Um, you'll see it move back, but then you'll also see what happens when it strikes something. And you can see this kind of like interaction of things. So uh, for this next bit, have a watch of those two videos. Uh, there's a lot to see in them. There's a lot of very interesting things happening when things travel at high velocities. Um, but the key thing of this is to look out for those recalls. Look out for that experience of the bullet, which is moving in one direction. And keep an eye on the barrel of the gun and or the gun itself, which will, as a consequence, and the conservation momentum, move back towards the person who's pulled the trigger. And we'll do some problems. You'll get a chance to do some review problems next time.